you how you can make a scatter plot and put error bars on the individual data points that represent the mean values for different treatments. Uh, Google's got a slick new interface for making graphs, but frustratingly enough, they haven't made it very easy to put separate error bars on individual data points with the error bars having different magnitude. But there's a bit of a workaround uh, where we can do that. So I've got some raw data here in a table. I've got, you can see, uh, five different levels of treatment. In this case, uh, maybe this is like an experiment with jumping jacks and the effect on heart rate. So uh, different numbers of jumping jacks, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and then uh, five trials per treatment. So kind of a classic five by five uh, experiment design. So first thing I want to do is process this data. So I'll calculate uh, the mean. And so I can just do the equals the average, and I'll just highlight, uh, in this case, these five cells and hit enter. And then I can use the drag here to auto-populate. And if I check, it'll be B3 to F3, B4 to F4, and so on. Um, so letting Google read my mind here. I can do standard deviation now also because that's what's going to provide the magnitude for the error bars for each different treatment. So again, I'll use the formula for that, S, T, D, E, V. I'll select again the mean value, the, the raw values, not including the mean value. Enter. I'm going to hover over the bottom corner here. Click, hold, and drag again, and it will auto-populate B3 to F3 and so on and so forth. I'm also just going to, quick note here, I'm going to clean this up. Uh, one of the IB... Uh, data presentation expectations is that there's consistent decimal placing even with the process data that should be consistent with the raw data. So you can see I've got one decimal place here and a whole mess of decimals here. Don't want that so I'm going to highlight all of this and then these buttons up here can control the precision of my uh, data presentation. So I want to decrease decimal places there so I've got whole number placing and I'm just gonna shrink this column a little bit here I'll center this data just so it looks nice and tidy also okay so now normally uh, if I was gonna make a table I would make a little quick summary data table with my treatments and my mean and my standard deviations and I copy and I can just paste the values only here um, but I'll reformat them again like that so over here now I've got this little summary oops too small Summary data table of trials, mean, standard deviation. Now, if I highlight the uh, trials and the mean values and I go to insert chart and I insert a scatter plot, I don't want to call them charts, so I'll go here, chart type. I'm going to pick scatter plot. So I scroll down to scatter plot. I've got a nice looking trend, line, trend here, um, positive, relatively linear trend. The problem is, is that if I go here and I want to add error bars in the customize section to, uh, to my series, and say I want to apply error bars, the only option I have here is to apply one size of error bars to all of the data points. But of course, each different treatment has its own corresponding standard deviation. And so I want different size error bars. I want plus or minus three, plus or minus two, and so on. So uh, this graph is going to work great if instead of an error bar, you want a trend line. So we can show a trend line nicely there, and we could put the equation of the trend line with our r squared value, etc., on that. But for, for this video, what I'm going to show you is not how to do this, but how to be able to put different size error bars on here. So the, the workaround is a little bit clunky, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to get the job done. So the the orientation needs to match this so I'm gonna put the treatments down this way but I'm gonna also type the same treatments in going out horizontally and then in the cell that is the intersection between the row and the column of the particular level of treatment that I want that's where I'm gonna put my mean value so in this case I'm gonna put 62 here so that's the mean of the uh, sorry, this should be treatment, not trials. <clears throat> anyway, so for the level of treatment 10 jumping jacks, that's the mean is 62. I'm going to find then for treatment 
level 20, the mean is 73. So 20 here, I'm going to put 73 here, and it's going to come on down here diagonally. So 30 is 83, 40 is 90, and 50 is 103. So maybe this person is in good shape if their heart rate's only 100 after 50 jumping jacks. Anyway, so now I'm going to select this whole mess here and insert a chart. Now, that's a, a very pretty graph, but of course, we don't want a column chart, we want a scatter plot. So I'm going to come over here, column chart, I'm going to drop down, I'm going to pick scatter plot. And the, the key thing here is that each one of these points on the graph is automatically a different color. And if you look here in the data selection, you can see that each of these is a series corresponding to the column where there's only one data point. The value of that is that each different series is going to allow me to use a different size error bar. So that's going to look like this. So I'm going to come over here to the customize function. I'm going to go to the series. And now instead of applying to all series, I'm going to apply individually dot by dot error bars. So it's a little bit cumbersome, but it's, it's going to get the job done anyway. So data series one is my blue point here. And I'm going to check error bars. I'm going to change percent to constant because I want it to be equivalent to the magnitude of the standard deviations I've calculated. So over here, the value is not 10. I'm just going to look up my value for treatment uh, size 10. The standard deviation was 3. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that again for data series 2. So I'm going to look this up. I need error bars, constant. My second one is going to be a size 2. So type in the value 2. Go to data series 3. I'm going to find that one. I want error bars, constant. If I look value up here, the value is 3. Okay, and you should see it changing along with me typing in the values. Data series 4. I see this large standard deviation here of 10. So constant. It's already set to 10. I don't even have to change it. And then finally, data series 5. I'm going to put error bars on again. One last error bar constant. And back here, it's a size 3. So if I look... Uh, I don't, I'm going to turn that data label off on it. There we go. Anyway, so I can see here I've got 0.62, 73, 83, that corresponds here with 3, and then here 90 is the one that has the large error bars, and I can see that. One final bit of just cleanup here is it looks kind of clunky to have different colored points for each of these. That's just auto generated because of the uh, different the fact that they're different series but what I can do is I can go in for all series and um, one by one I can go in and change their color so maybe we'll just stick with blue for all of them so for data series 2 I'm gonna turn it to blue also data series 3 also turn that to blue and so on and so forth for all these series Again, this is not the most elegant solution, but it works. And uh, if any of you guys have a better solution than this, uh, I'm all ears. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this legend. We've got you know all five dots here. That's also um, I think not ideal. So what I'm just going to do is I'm actually just going to turn that legend off. So the position rather than right is uh, none, no legend there. Okay, and I'm just going to make sure that my title is appropriately descriptive. One thing in the titles here chart. Axis title, so I go in here. If I edit the chart title, you know, um, I'm going to have some descriptive title like a comparison of you know mean heart rate after varying amounts of jumping jacks. And another thing that you can do is after the the title, I should be able to put a subtitle on there. And a great subtitle for this is going to be something like error bars indicate plus or minus one standard deviation. So you always want to include a little qualifier so that we know where the magnitude of these error bars came from because as you know error bars in general are just a way to represent variability so it could be something like our confidence interval or it could be um, you know the 75th percentile and 25th percentile or max and min all sorts of things in this case we've used standard deviation to get the size of that error bar and then you can go through here of course and edit all these other horizontal axis, vertical axis titles, and make it look all pretty. But uh, that's the gist of it. So this organization of data is really the key thing to allow you to put on these different size error bars. All right, hopefully that was helpful. Again, if anybody knows a better way, 
uh, leave it in the comments.